This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Friday morning, let's talk tax. <laughs> With Tom Yamachika, president of the Hawaii Tax Foundation. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show. Here we are at the end of the year, and you know, chaos in the White House, nothing new there. Um, but but uh, it affects things. Uh, we, 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 we may very well today have a shutdown of the government, at least for a few days or longer. Um, according to Trump, it might be a long time. You know, he's very strong about this. Um, and, um, and, and on the other side of the coin, maybe we spend $5 billion on the wall, which every, every $5 billion gets to be 10 and 15 and 20 by the time you finish with the project, as we know with rail here in Honolulu. So I guess my question to you is, does any of that affect our tax you know, process, our, our, our substance of tax, taxing and paying tax here in Honolulu? Well, uh, one thing that... Uh, happened, as, as, you, as you know, I'm sure, is that the tax system changed a lot from what it was in 2017. Uh, and that was kind of more of a you know, end of 2017, beginning of 2018 topic. But, but, but at that time, it was kind of largely theoretical. At the end of this year, you will have your first tax year under, the, under Trump tax. And uh, everybody's going to see some changes, uh, some People will see big changes. Um, more, uh, even the tax form is going to be different. When you, when you do your tax form next year, it's going to be very unlike the, you know, the 1040 that you know and love. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, it, it, the, the first page actually will look like a postcard. It's, it only has writing on half of the page. But it's only the first page. <laughs> After a while, we get into the thicket. <laughs> right. Um, I, and I, I don't know how many people are familiar with like uh, the nonprofit returns, the Form 990s. The way they work is, yeah, th there's, there's a relatively simple form, but if you, if you hit uh, this particular area, you need to attach a schedule. If you need this particular area, you, need, you have to attach another schedule. If you uh, fill in this particular area, then you have to attach another schedule. And so it gets, starts getting larger and larger and larger. Uh, depending on what kind of areas you hit, so the uh, the 1040 is going to be the same way. Hmm. Okay, so if you're self-employed, oop, another schedule. If you're uh, if you've got a supplemental income and loss, like from a partnership or um, an LLC that you hold, another schedule. If you have rent, you know, rents and royalties, that's another schedule. Hmm. Yeah, well, we should spend a moment about, um, you know, how the Tax Reform Act of 2017 passed in the last days, just a year ago, in 2017, is going to affect us filing returns in 2019. But, but query, I mean, what, what, about, what about the, um, the shutdown? Is that going to have an effect, you think, on, on us as taxpayers? And, uh, I mean, either on the, on the federal side or on the state side because of things that happened on the federal side. You know, and, I, I, don't, I don't see that it, it will. Um, Primarily because, like in all of the other shutdowns that have happened in, in recent memory, you know, no federal workers lost a day of pay. They all got paid up uh, yeah. ultimately. Yeah, when the when the shutdown ends, uh, everybody gets paid back pay. So you know, we have to pay a whole lot of money for no work, right? I mean, that's that's kind of how it works. They don't get interest though, do they? No. And and they have additional time. In this case, they would have uh, they would have a few days to go shopping. That's right. So spend some into the economy, spend some money into the economy. Right. So that's uh, a great time of year to have a shutdown. <laughs> like the, when, when, when the malls are all geared up and, and, and retailers are going, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's uh, you know, get some of this, you know, <laughs> get some of this activity because people have more time to shop. Yeah, yeah, it's true. If they're not working. So uh, going back to uh, the point about the, uh, the 2017 Tax Reform Act, you know, um, so so there's a, there's a bit of a break for people, uh, middle middle class, I guess. Um, there's a bigger break for corporations. The break for corporations lasts indefinitely. The break for middle class, the little people, doesn't last indefinitely. Yeah, it ends years. in a few years. Yeah. Um, but but I think the bi the biggest change that people are going to see, like right now, is the you know the doubling of the standard deduction. Okay. 
the standard deduction, of course, is, is what you can take on your tax return and write off without needing to substantiate anything. So, just, just that you're alive. Yeah, so it encourages you not to itemize. That's right. I mean, you don't have to itemize unless you have a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that's, that's why, like a lot of charities, for example, are getting worried because uh, for most people, um, their, you know, what they give to charity is well within the, uh, the, the standard deduction amount. So um, if people won't get a tax benefit, right, from, from giving to charity mm. unless they, you know, give a, a bit more than they're used to. Right, because they, they, they can use the doubled standard deduction. Um, you can get that even if they don't give anything to charity. That's right. There's no incentive. That's right. Yeah. Now, that, so, that's going to apply for 2018, right? Yes. So when they file their, when they, when, they give, when they give gifts at the end of this year, you know, December now, um, they may not give as much to charity. And, and they'll still get the double deduction, standard deduction for when they file their taxes in 2019. Yeah, so, so that kind of leads to one planning point, and that is if you've got gifts you want to make, right, consider, you know, taking, taking gifts from several, you know, maybe two, three years, squeezing them into one year so you can, you, you can break the thresholds. You want, you want to get outside the double standard deduction. That's right. You, you want to itemize. Effectively, yeah. I mean, the 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 the, the plan is, uh, in the year that you g give all these gifts, uh, that that's the year you itemize. Okay, you know the uh, the following year you have you know you have no money, which which is fine. You get your regular standard deduction. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to take the simple road though and forget about it. You know? They might. Yeah. And, and a charity charity should be concerned about that. That's what happens when you run a bill through Congress so quickly and you don't have hearings on a tax bill. You don't let anybody speak on it. You don't confer with anybody. That's what happened with that bill. And so at the end of the day, I remember Paul Ryan, uh, you know, it was like three days after the, after the Tax Reform Act passed. He said, oh, gee whiz, we gave away so, much, uh, so many tax benefits here. We're not going to have enough money to run the government. We're going to have to cut back on social services and various other things because now, you know, a few days later, we don't have, you know, what happened? How could they possibly not have known that when they, when they um, just three or four days later, when they, they passed uh, earlier, when they passed the, um, the bill in the first place? Oh, I'm sure they knew it. It's just a, a question of, well, are we going to stimulate the economy and get the engine running, uh, you know, hotter and faster and, you know, throwing off more revenue? You know, that's, that's the question. Yeah, it actually didn't need to be hotter and faster. It was going pretty well at the time. Well, but they wanted it hotter and faster. Purely political thing. So over time, we'll see less revenue to the federal government. And therefore, because of these tax breaks they gave in that bill, and we'll see, you know, less money available to pay for social services and so forth. So the pressure would be on Congress to reduce social services, which I think Republicans want to do that anyway. Um, well, yeah, but, but it won't be quite as easy this time because, you know, now uh, Democrats control the House and Republicans control, still control the Senate, so there's going to be a lot more, uh, you know, back and forth. Back and forth, but the, if the tax bill stays in effect, there won't be as much money. So whatever they do, you know, whoever has the majority, um, they will have to change the Tax Reform Act in order to get more money, am I right? Well, yeah, they've, they, they've, they've got to touch the Tax Reform Act anyway because they have to do some technical corrections. So uh, it's definitely a vehicle that, that you know, people can use to make changes if they want to. So there's probably going to be a lot of horse trading involved to, uh, you yeah. know, to get, get to that place. Yeah, what's made more complicated by is the fact that the stock market has been you know, going down a steep curve lately. And there's no guarantee it'll come up again. In fact, um, you know, I think the, the, this, this profile on the chart suggests we might be in for a recession, um, if not immediately, then over the next six months. And if that's the case, if we have a national recession, uh, depending on how bad it is, of course, we'll have even lower tax collections because you're taxing income. And um, that, that, would, that would create a problem, a further exacerbation of the problem about not having enough money 
to pay the federal government's expenses, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, there are definitely ripple effects. So the question is, how does all that, this is not an easy question, I apologize. How does all that affect the state? How does that affect us, the state, and us, the taxpayers in the state? Well, uh, where we are, I think, vis-a-vis -vis the federal government, is that the federal government is, is a major employer here, you know, with, between the military, federal agencies, and so forth. Uh, they, they put a lot into our economy. And then, of course, you know, we, as citizens, pay federal taxes. Uh, so there's an, a m number of dollars that go outside. Uh, I think when you compare the two, uh, we get more than we give. So, um, you know, a, a you know, slowdown or diminution in what the federal government does, does is, is going to hurt us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and um, you're assuming, by the way, when you say that the military is here and is a recipient of, you know, and Brian Schatz would love to see that, I'd like to do what Dan and Owe was doing, you know, uh, feed federal money in for military purposes and other purposes. Stay. But you're assuming that the military will stay here. You know, from time to time, there have been discussions about moving the military or substantial parts of the force that is here in Honolulu uh, to Guam and elsewhere. If the military moves, there's not enough or not as many uh, military people and expenditures as there were before. It takes money to move the military. Okay. It takes money to move the military. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, so where are you going to get the resources to, to, to get them on transports and, 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 and send them places? It, you know, it's, that, that, that'll be a, a horrific undertaking. It will. Yeah. And presumably Congress will get involved in that, although you know, it is in a free association world, um, if the president can pull troops out of Syria um, uh, and out of Afghanistan on the same day because the president was having a bad hair day that day, and some people think he has a bad hair day every day, uh, then like, likewise, he could pull troops out of Honolulu and put them some, somewhere else. The problem is funding the move, as you say. Yeah, and then... Uh, what is going to be the strategic goal uh, for moving troops out of Honolulu to you know wherever it is? Is it going to be what to to uh, to aggravate North Korea to to uh, uh, and 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 if and if and if you do that, is the United States going to be better or uh, or worse off in terms of military protection? Because because we do have active threats. Yes, I agree. We, we, uh, need, in, in we have needs for, for, for security here. South China here. Sea, North Korea, yeah. uh, we, we have needs. But the, more and more in the new normal, these decisions are becoming his alone. And he, he you know, he... he well, that's, that's not a tax problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not a tax problem. So we're going to address that in a break. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to come back in one minute, then we'll go back to tax. You'll see. Tom Yamachika, Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We'll be right back. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be a solution. How to make a brighter day. Hey, aloha, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Some people say this show is community matters, but it's not. It's talking tax. <laughs> talking tax with the Tax Foundation. <laughs> Tom Yamachika. <laughs> oh, man. You'll, you, you, you get into this too much, Jane. <laughs> So let's talk about other tax planning considerations. 
Um, let's talk about, um, you know, uh, what, 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 what a person can do here at the end of the year to improve his position in terms of making last uh, end of year tax moves. Sure. Um, one, one thing you can do is that if you have, like if you have a portfolio and you have a lot of paper losses in it, uh, i.e., you know, issues where the, uh, the, the, the stock's gone down in value, uh, but uh, it's, it's, just, it's just there sitting in your portfolio and hasn't been realized, and you, have, and you have capital gains that have been taken earlier in the year and are, are going to be uh, taxed if you don't do anything about it. Now may be, be a good time to you know, sell off those, those overpriced shares, uh, realize your capital losses, and, and put them where, where they're the most good, and that is against the capital gains. Mm. So, so if you have too much capital losses, you only get to take $3,000 a year. But if you've got capital gains, you can wipe your capital gains out first. So that's one thing you should consider if you've got uh, capital gains and some, and some paper losses in your portfolio. So mix that up for me with the, the, you know, the phenomenon we've seen in the last two weeks of the stock market you know, going straight down. How, yeah, how does so that you, work you, for the average person? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, you, if, you've, if, you, if you're holding stock and you acquired it recently, you're probably looking at paper losses. Yeah. So uh, the question then becomes, well, did, did, you, did you get some gains earlier in the year uh, that you can use your losses against? And if so, uh, what you can do is, uh, you know, sell off your stock. Uh, if, you, if you really like it, you can buy it again next year. Uh, but, but, but you sell it off now so you, so you realize your losses and, uh, and net them against your gains. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. Okay, that, that's you. one thing. Thank you for that. Another thing is uh, if you've got an IRA and you've got uh, you know, somebody who's like 70 and a half or more, they're, they're worried about something called required minimum distribution. And, and RMD. Yeah. And uh, if uh, they don't really need the money right now, uh, and they have some charities that they you know, want to give money to, well, here, here's what you can do. Instead of taking the money yourself, which you would have to do, okay, you can send that money to the charity. It's, it, it, it doesn't count as income to you. It does count as part of your required minimum distribution. Okay? So you can, you can get around that requirement and not hit income. Well, that's cool. And, and that would... Would that be the case even if you were taking that double uh, standard deduction for 2018? Uh, yeah, it, it, the, the, the amount it's of... It's never income to you, so it, you don't, it's not even calculated. Yeah, it, it never even hits your income tax. But, it, but because you're not getting the income, that's a tremendous tax benefit for you. That's right. You don't have to pay ta any tax on that. That's right. So how does that work? You, just, you, you tell your pension plan, for example, I want you to give to... Think Tech Hawaii or the Tax Foundation, <laughs> and and then uh, that, that's simply subtracted. You get you get credit for making your RMD, right? But it's subtracted from your RMD for purposes of um, uh, income to you, the recipient of the RMD. Well, it, it, so you take it out. You take it out en route. Yeah. So so like for example, if you have an IRA. Uh, and, and you have to distribute $10,000 from it. Um, if you don't do anything, you have to take your $10,000 and get taxed on the $10,000, right? But instead, you say, okay, um, Mr. IRA custodian, please distribute the $10,000 to Think Tech Hawaii, which is a, a 501c3 tax exempt organization. Then the $10,000 doesn't hit your return, so, the, so you don't get taxed on it at all. You don't, you don't get a deduction, but you don't care because you didn't have the income. You never had the income. It's better than a deduction, really. Yeah. <laughs> you never had the income. That's right. So you see, there are a lot of things that would limit the deduction, okay? But if you don't get the income in the first place and you don't get taxed, it's better. Better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're still counted as having made your $10,000 distribution so, so the feds won't get mad at you for not, for not paying yourself. It's beautiful. You heard it here on ThinkTech. It's a fabulous idea. Everybody should do that. Yeah, if you're you don't have to give it to ThinkTech or the Tax Foundation, but some charity, and, and you get a tremendous benefit, and you still get the double standard deduction when you file your taxes in 2019. Right. And, but so, so the, the, um, uh, the, the clinchers are, 
it's, it's got to be an IRA, okay? Uh, it won't work for the 401k, mm. okay? Um, and you've got to be 70 and a half. 70 and a half or... Yeah, well, well, that's the RMD year anyway, right? Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for that, Tom. So let's talk about uh, Council on Revenues and what they predict for revenues. Let's talk about whether revenues are going to match up with what they predicted. Let's talk about what's pending, if anything, in the state legislature, which will open in a, just in a few weeks. Uh, what changes are we going to see? How is, and, and let's, talk about, let's talk about David Ige's um, budget, which does not actually get to the same amount as the amount that would be available under the Council of Revenues. I find that very interesting. Yeah, yeah uh, for, for the last uh, couple of years, I think the, the budget that, that the executive has, has put into the legislature um, isn't balanced. And, and, and doesn't match the revenue numbers. So too high or too low? Uh, there's a deficiency. Mm -hmm. so, so basically, he's got a budget with a problem. Give it to the legislature to tell them to fix it. Because they, they, they have to pop up with a, a balanced budget. Right? That's, that's a constitutional requirement. Um, but I mean, if I, if I were the, you know, the money chairs getting, getting such a budget, I wouldn't appreciate that. <laughs> No, yeah, I don't think they me, did. You, you're giving me all these problems. You're telling me to fix it? <laughs> why don't you fix it? Yeah, yeah. This, this is your, this is your job, man. not mine. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, so so right now we're in the middle of the budgeting process, uh, or not not the middle, but the, but the beginning of it. It's already started. Even though the legislature's not open, uh, they've already started having budget hearings. Okay, and um, it's interesting because. There are, different, there are discussions about different philosophies of doing the budget. Okay, right now we have, um, basically, you have, this, <coughs> you have this last year, in, and, you, and you justify the pluses and minuses. Okay, which, um, I'm not sure of the term for it, but uh, they rely on things called variance reports. Variance reports meaning, okay, well, what did you actually spend uh, was it higher or lower than budget? And if it was any different, mm -hmm. you know, why, why did it happen? This is part of the process of balancing it or seeing if you did balance it. Right. The, uh, and and, and I've, I've started taking a look at the, bar the variance reports. And, and, and a lot of these um, uh, have some very strange um, uh, provisions in them, like, you know, each... Uh, each component unit of government is supposed to measure, you know, specific goals, right? I mean, like like most of us who run businesses, we have numeric targets or, or numeric uh, uh, goals to meet, and and, and we, that's how we measure our progress. Okay. Well, you, well, you, well, you take out the uh, the variance report for like Honolulu Airport, Honolulu International Airport. Uh, no, Dan, Dan Daniel Key, no International Airport. Sorry about that. And, and you take a look at the, the, the measures. So measure number one, no data. No, measure number two, no data. Measure number three, no data. No, we're, we're here. You guys picked your own measures. And why are you saying there's no data? There's got to be data. There's got to be data. But either they don't like it or they... Uh, they're too lazy to collect it, or you know, what's 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 their problem? You know, I mean, you know, most agencies do play ball. They they, they have they have measures, uh, and they do track them. Um, but the airports uh, seem to be uh, in a world of their own. <laughs> they always have been, I think. <laughs> well, the the airport was supposed to have this big facelift. 20 years ago, it hasn't really happened. But, you know, there was a piece about Sylvia Luke, chair of the uh, House um, Finance Committee for a long time, and how she was going to be real careful about any kind of spending this year. Especially yeah, what, what she careful. wants to do is, uh, you know, instead of the, the, the plus minus variance process, uh, she wants to transition to what's called zero-based budgeting, which basically means we don't care what you spent last year. You need to justify every dollar you spend from, 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 from number one. 
Which is an attempt to spend less. Yeah, you would think so. Um, I, I think most agencies are not equipped to do that, at least not now. Uh, if they, uh, if if they're if they're kind of forced to, then then maybe they'll they'll learn a little bit. Uh, zero based budgeting is is done elsewhere. Uh, it, it's a lot of work. It's more work because you start out from scratch. Yeah, right. it means you have to justify everything, and you can't rely on anything that happened before. That's hard. Yeah, but 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 still, I think to. Uh, exercise proper oversight over over our government, and and you know for many years we don't you know we, we don't know how much money we had we don't know how much money we spent. Right? I, I think at some point you have to do something like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wouldn't wouldn't argue with it, but it sounds like it means we're going to be spending less. <clears throat> it sounds like it means we're going to we're we're going to have a real balance of the budget this year and. And the only real uh, issue is, uh, are we going to earn enough, earn as much as we thought we were going to earn? Um, and if we're not going to earn as much as we thought we were going to earn, we're going to have to raise taxes or find a way to make that up. Right. right. So we could, we could run into this. I mean, if the federal government really has a problem here and it, it can't give us the kind of infusion that it normally has given us, then we're going to have to raise taxes to make up the difference. Yeah, so, so um, there are a, a number of things we can you know, keep our, our finger on, uh, you know, on the pulse of. Uh, one is, you know, are, are we getting money from the federal government? Are we spending it? Right? If we're not spending it, it's, it's, it's a very good case for the, for the federal agency to say, hey, you don't need it. You don't need it. So why, why are we giving it to yeah. you? So um, uh, if, if, we're, if, we're, if we have federal government money we're pulling down now, um, we should uh, look into, you know, whether we can get more. If we're not pulling down federal government money, and we, and we can, then we have to look into why we're not doing it. Uh, for example, I wrote a piece, well, um, you know, a few weeks ago regarding uh, the uh, special education funding uh, that, you know, DOE gets or, or could pull down. Um, like the average seat would pull down, you know, forty, fifty million dollars. We we pulled down five hundred thousand. We could have had a lot more. Yeah, I mean, we we, we pulled down one percent of what what we per, perhaps could have well, gotten. This happens all the time. It's headlines whenever it happens, and it's because somebody in state government is not doing his job. Is that what? Is that why? It was, it's it's not headlines. That's that's one problem. Oh, should be. It should be. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because not only do we not get the money, but because the Fed doesn't think we need the money, we're sending them a message. We yeah, we're sending we're sending them an incorrect message. Yeah, we do need the money. Yeah, I mean, we are providing services to indigent kids. Uh, you know, they they are compensable. You know, we just need to submit the paperwork. What I don't understand. Uh, last question. We're almost out of time. Is we have all these unliquidated liabilities out there, unpaid liabilities. You know, ERS, the contributions, the ERS, the rail, uh, the cost of homeless is another one. There's there's a whole bunch of them, and they're forty or fifty billion dollars when you make a list, and we're not really paying them off. Um, and uh, I, it's hard to say whether these are the good times or maybe not so much the good times. But when and how are we going to pay them off? Uh, where are we going to get that from? Um, that sounds like an insoluble problem, Tom. Um, and if we well, don't well, pay first, them off, what happens to us? Well, 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 first we have to get those those folks in the legislature to realize that this is this is a problem. Uh, a lot of them are are in denial. They they, they don't think uh, that there is is a need to prefund, you know, ERS or EUTF. They think, oh, we can we can handle it as it comes. Yeah, that's not good good balancing. It's not good balancing. Yeah. So we, we need to kind of get a, get a handle on fiscal policy. We need to get disciplined, uh, and we need to do the right thing. Well, what, what, what happens if we don't? What, what happens if we you know, cruise down the road here without addressing these over uh, a long time? Well, yeah. then you could, you could be in a situation like Illinois or Michigan. Um, you know, cities, cities went bankrupt. Uh, states went insolvent. Puerto Rico. Oh, sure. I remember Puerto Rico. Yeah. It left Puerto Rico very exposed to, made very vulnerable for that storm. Hard to recover if you don't have the money, you know. Yeah. You know they had financial problems before the storm hit. 
So should we be uh, oh should we be worried about any other changes in in the, in the tax law in the state of Hawaii uh, this coming session? Is there anything else in the pipeline we should know about? There's a there's a lot that's being talked about. I mean, there's um, uh, talk about carbon tax. There's a, a talk about uh, oh let's um, change the way we do uh, road usage. Uh, let's 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 have a charge for it instead of fuel tax because we've got uh, energy efficient vehicles that aren't paying fuel tax. Mm -hmm. How about credits? Are any likely credits, for example, electric vehicle credits? Or... There, there are there are a lot of credits that were um, that were they were kind of you know, being pushed uh, last year or the year before and, and didn't make it through. Uh, I'm sure the proponents of those credits will want you know want to try again. Yeah, so this is the second year of the biennium, right? Uh, first. First year. Okay, yeah. so it, it's it comes in fresh, so we're not we're not sure exactly what's going to come in. Uh, who knows what will happen? Um, but you know there are a number of credits that went away over the past few years. You know, electric vehicles is one. That's on the federal side, yeah. Not that that didn't happen in the state. Oh, side. right, it didn't happen here. We we used to have electric vehicle credits, but we don't have it anymore. Yeah, we it still have, we still have. You know, credits for we have the federal, yeah, but not the state. Yeah, we have uh, state credits for you know, like photovoltaic and wind and other kinds of installations, yeah. but and that's that I think is not expiring at least not so far. Yeah, well, it, you know, it'll be in play for sure. I don't know. Lots of stuff will be in play. Yeah. Well, uh, can we can we follow that with you, Tom? Sure. All right, we want to see what we'll comes in. We'll be It's going to come in soon, next few weeks. So let's get together again. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tom Yamachika, President of Hawaii Tax Foundation. Uh, always, always great to be here. Talking tax with Tom.